Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. I have several things today. First on our calendar is UFO day, sort of a check-in to see where we are with our UFOs for the month of April. Uh, also, I have on there uh, that it is World Gardening Day. <laughs> This has to be the best day in the world, besides World Quilting Day. Gardening day, gardening, 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 flowers, yes. Okay, and also I have a segment called How to Ship a Quilt, uh, and that will be, I'll do that second, do the other stuff first, and there's also an article at my website today on how to ship a quilt, and that is linked from my uh, so along website too, so you can find it again. So first let's talk about the UFOs. I knew already that in April there would be very little UFO action happening. <laughs> then I'm right. Uh, so I got this one out. I'm going to get the binding, get it out of my basket of binding that should be just bindings that are ready for these quilts that are need them. And I will get this one done because this will be going to a friend and I want to have it done. Yes, 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 yes. Have to have it done by the end of the month. So that is my goal for this guy to, it, it should just take me one evening if I get the binding out. You know, it's for me, it's like if it's not in here, like right in front of me, I don't know, maybe you're the same way, maybe you're not. But if I have it on the shelf out in the, the with the quilts, I don't think about it, even if it's on my list. But if I stick it in here, stick it down, get the binding now after I do the video, then maybe even tonight or tomorrow night, I might sit down and do the binding on it if it's all here ready to go. So that is the power of having things in that you need to work on in your space rather than the things you need to work on being stored somewhere else. They just go out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the way it is. So for gardening, to, I know that I should not put any plants in the ground yet. We probably are not going to get any more freezes, but you never know in April. Uh, so I think I might just do a little plan. I might work on a little plan for my front garden because we dug up all that stuff that I didn't want in there anymore. And so I, I want to do a little plan. I want to replace the butterfly bush that had died and then put some other things in that the deer won't eat. <laughs> <laughs> and I also have, if you know, a shade, flowering, flowering shade that the deer don't eat. Because uh, I'm not going to put stuff down to deter the deer. I'm just going to put flowers they don't eat. Uh, that's a much easier solution. They don't come in my backyard because it's fenced. So that is my gardening thing today is to kind of look at that plan and know what I want to purchase so that I don't go and just purchase a whole bunch of stuff like I usually do. Because <laughs> it's like all the flowers, yes, and I buy them all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of flowers, I had some stuff in that are kind of, kind of gardening theme. I have to show you, look at these socks. Look, 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 look. Could these be more adorable? No, no, they could not. And it says queen bee. Oh, I love them. I love them so much. Gotta have that. Gotta have some extra fun things. Now finishes. I did get the carrot bags all done. Ta da! I ran out of the skinny. If I had measured in advance, I would have had enough because some of these are kind of long. But instead, I found one that has brown. So, okay, I'm okay with that. That's a little bit wider uh, uh, twill tape or whatever it is. Grow, game, grow grain ribbon, that's what it is. But it works out. So, I've got all those done, ready to fill. And so, I just need to go get a few more goodies to put in them. Okay, I also have a mail call. Yes. So this is from Carol in Georgia. Look, that's her state. And she sent me a sweet note and some selvages. Really great. Whoops. There you go. Great stuff. Some to add. Lots of good uh, space on there for me to use the fabric to like, showcase. And then also from Connie in Kansas. She sent me what all is in here? Oh yeah, the more selvages. So she sent me a whole pile, also with a lot of great edges on it. Look at that, look how cute that is. Fun stuff. See, you need short pieces too. There's some beautiful green. And then she sent me a cute card. So, oh here, here's the card. Yes. <laughs> how, <laughs> how sweet, huh? Mwah. Thank you so much, my friends. All right, before we do the shipping, I want to show you the um, old, old things in your studio. <laughs> What's the oldest thing in your studio? So let's take a look at a few of them. 
Brenda showed us this string holder, which I guess the ball of string would go in the sphere, the ball there that opens up, and then this beautiful medallion piece that's hanging off of it. Maybe the string wrapped around that. I don't know how this was used. So if any of you know how these were used, tell me in the comments. There were lots and lots and lots of showing, sewing machines. So I'm gonna show you a few of them. This is Carol's, uh, and she has the date 1936 put right on it with the decals, a uh, special paint job, of course. They didn't come in that color originally. Christina shared two different pictures. So this is the first one of her vintage irons. I love that. You know, they just are so, so interesting. I think my Nana had a, one of those really old black irons. And then she also showed a spool case. Several of you have different styles of spool cases. They are just so gorgeous. Oh, wish I had one of those. Cindy came in with the, uh, not what you think. What she's showing you is not what you think is the oldest thing in her studio. The oldest thing in her studio is this 30 year old African violet sitting on top of the sewing machine cabinet. Uh, in reality, the cabinet is probably older, but she wanted to show off this absolutely stunning African violet. More thread cabinets. This is a really interesting one. Uh, looks like she has a, maybe some vintage spools in there too. This belongs to Claire. And it was from a general store that her grandfather owned. And so this, the cabinet they figure is at least 120 years old. Now, uh, Eve had this China doll from the 1800s in her studio space, her sewing space. Oh, she's so gorgeous. Love it. So we've got a couple more sewing machines because there's all different styles. This one is from Jody, 1882. It's a hand crank. Ah, that is really cool. I don't know anything about hand crank machines. Someday I'll have to learn. And then she also has another hand crank uh, that's a little bit newer. She said this is a Japanese model and that she takes this one camping. So she doesn't need any electricity since she's hand cranking those stitches. This one fascinated me, so beautiful. She has this little vase, little tiny vases, and I just love little vases. Uh, it is from 1893 World's Fair, which says right on there in the engraving. And she said that her mother found it in a house that she had purchased in the 1940s and then kept it. Like what a treasure, that is just amazing. Linda, 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 she is showing us her great grandmother's gold thimble. Yes, it is gold. Isn't that incredible? And then look at that little case that thimble came in. Thimbles are precious. Lots and lots of tins were shown. This is Marley's tin, which was her mom. So she said she can just remember this forever. And I love that it says sewing box for little tots. Just, and I love the graphics on there. So gorgeous. And of course it's red, red, everything red. <laughs> Nora shared her pin cushion and thread holder. This was her mom's. The top, that thing that looks like sort of like a flower, a tulip, that is where the pin cushion should go in. So there should be a, um, you know, a cloth pin cushion up there. And then the threads. Lots of wooden ironing boards. This is from Olita. And they, many of you are using your wooden ironing boards, which I think is fabulous. Are they tall enough? That one looks really low. <laughs> But maybe some, maybe she just has, maybe she's not, maybe Olita's not real tall. Uh, but my Nana had an uh, ironing board for her, you know, getting, she had to iron her clothes to get ready to go to work. She always had the ironing board out. Another absolutely fabulous machine from Roberta. Look how beautiful this is. Oh my goodness, the decals, how fancy. Oh, so nice. Now Robin acquired these wooden spools with a thread on them. They're probably from some milling factory. Many of you will see these spools, but these came from her daughter's boyfriend's great grandmother. So they were fa they're family pieces, which I think makes them so special and love that hanger that they're on. Here's a really cool old thing in the studio, Sue's closet door. It is from their barn from 1947. Isn't that fabulous? What a great idea to use the barn wood and make it something special in your space. And the last one, 
to share is from Tammy, and this is her grandmother at work as a pattern tester in Chicago. So look up in the wall, look behind her, like what she's facing are the pattern pieces. So if she's testing out this pattern, she has the pattern pinned up there on like a board, uh, and then she can sew right there in front of it and check things that she has to check. Oh, thank you everybody for sharing. This has been amazing. It was so fun to see your things. There were so many. This was just a small, tiny sampling of a few that I that I you know grabbed off the uh, group quilt along with Pat Sloan at Facebook. So I do want to show you two other, I mean, three other things I have in my own studio that I uh, didn't show you the other day. Th these are things I bought. So they're all things I purchased. They're not from family or handed down. But I wanted to get a little uh, vintage sewing machine. It's like a toy. It's a child's toy machine. I don't think it's very old, but it's it's kind of adorable. So it sits in the, on my shelf up above. And then I also got, I have one of the, uh, an old iron. So <laughs> I think it's so super cool. It's green. What does that mean? It's got to be from like the 60s or the 40s maybe I don't know when they were doing green irons uh, no no water holes on those guys and a thimble I purchased when I was out visiting my publisher a few years ago so I they had a big 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 basket of thimbles uh, you know just this it was just so cool this whole basket of old thimbles and it's sort of bent and it fits so it's a tailor symbol which has the opening in the top like that. So the tailor symbol because my nails are always different sizes. And this is what I like. And it also has the ridges all the way around it. So that is the other thing that's really good about a tailor symbol and why I like them. Okay, shipping. How to ship a quilt. <laughs> I have a whole article over at my website today. Link is below. And if you're signed up for my emails, you'll be getting an email for it. Or you can go to I Love to Make Quilts and you can look for the, um, the box that says how to ship a quilt, you know, with a wording on it. So this is from Greg. Greg, and he wrote a whole lot of stuff. And what I thought I would do is just sort of recap a bit of it here uh, and tell you a little bit behind the scenes. Uh, so Greg has always been doing the shipping for our company since we started. So for about 24 years, he has been the shipping department. And I used to refer to him as the shipping department. And one time somebody wrote me early, early on and says, you have a whole department for shipping? It's like, yes, yes, I do. <laughs> that was Greg. <laughs> so he went through and listed a lot of key items. See? <laughs> a bunch of key items and I want to just give you a few of them you know here on the video because some of them are really really important one of them is to realize that we are a business and so we ship a lot of things and our pieces that we ship whether they're quilts whether they're um, the table runners or whether they're supplies for teaching um, things on loan my, the business ships things. So I'm a business, I'm shipping things. The quilts and things are part of the business. Yes, there are some that are more precious than others. There really are. There's some that, uh, you know, like let's say a good example is the Splendid Sampler, the quilts from the Splendid Sampler book. Well, most of those had to be shipped at some point back and forth. Like even the blocks coming to us from the designers for the Splendid Sampler, one of them from the UK, from Jenny Smith, must have taken a month to get here. It just took forever. And the one from India, it never made it here. I had to make it. I had to make her block because it just never arrived and we had book deadlines. So international shipping, which I have done a lot of, my quilts have gone to France, they have gone to uh, other Ireland. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a little bit more complex, but in the US, we're just talking here to help you with US shipping. So, so just keep that in mind. If you have a precious quilt, and if you can all at all possible deliver it in person, that is going to be your most reliable method. But shipping, you, you shouldn't really be afraid of it. And if you do a few of these steps, they're going to, you're going to be much more successful. A likelihood, you're going to eliminate some of the big problems. The number one biggest problem you have, I th think, well, there's probably two. The first is never hand label, never. Be sure your label is typed, it is done through a tracking system. It is printed out from that tracking system. It has barcodes and all these other things. Those things 
are really critical to be sure that your quilt will be tracked properly on its route. The other thing is the box that you put it in. You need to have a sturdy box. You need to be double, you know, taping it. You need to be packing the quilt in plastic. Uh, you need to have your address label inside the bag the quilt is in, which Greg lays out in here. Uh, getting that package securely um, wrapped and set up is also super critical because if people are putting it in flimsy boxes these things are thrown into the trucks uh, they might fall off the truck under the ground uh, they might be jabbed by something else uh, you know and putting your quilt in plastic is also immensely critical so here's a back behind the scenes story uh, many 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 years ago i was shipping a quilt and it wasn't that far it was just in southern virginia to a quilt shop and then i of course packed it in the bag and had the address label inside the bag with it in the plastic bag then inside the box when she shipped it back she just put the quilt inside the box and we got a notice from the post office that we needed to come pick our box up because it had been damaged uh, so talking to them on the phone, we're trying to figure out well, what kind of damage was it. It turns out there was something in another box, somebody else's box broke and leaked stuff. They don't know what it leaked, but my box soaked up that stuff. And we're like, okay. They said, well, if you, we, they could not open the box from the other person until that person responded. And, it, and they didn't respond for quite a while, by the way. Um, but our box, I could leave it sit there soaking wet, or I could pick it up. And if I picked it up, I sort of invalidated any insurance or something. So I'm like, okay, well, she probably put it in a plastic bag, so I'll be good. So I picked it up. She didn't put it in a plastic bag. She just shoved the quilt in the box. So the quilt was wet. It wasn't really wet, but it was wet. So later on, when the other box's owner finally came back from their travels, uh, you know, they'd been out of town for weeks and weeks, um, I found out that what leaked onto my quilt was a lava lamp, the liquid in the lava lamp, the probably the clear liquid because the blobby stuff with the wax was not heated up, obviously it was cold, but the liquid, which is a, a proprietary formula. So you don't know what that liquid is. Anyways, that's a behind the scenes story. My quilt turned out fine. Got, I washed it, but there's the case where why you need to put it in a plastic bag is of utmost importance. Okay, he had a bunch of other things, and I know you are going to really um, get a lot out of his article over at my website, so I hope you enjoy that and leave me a comment and let me know. Today is evaluate a UFO and think about gardening in some way, whether it's quilts, flowers on your quilts or something else. So I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.